In this section, we're going to learn how to solve another class of first order differential equations. And these fit a very specific form called linear differential equations. So first order linear differential equations. And I've given a list of some examples of first order linear differential equations, just to give us a sense of the shape of them and how they fit a pattern. And then we'll actually go through and solve these five examples throughout the course of this unit. So look at the first two or three examples and hopefully you can see a pattern start to emerge. If you notice the similarities between those first three examples, the general form starts to emerge. And in general, what you have with a first order linear equation is y prime plus something times y, and that something can be a function of x, 1 over x, 3x squared, or even a constant 2, which we can still think of as a function of x. So we'll call that p of x in general, just to have a label for it, and that's multiplied by y, and then that equals another function of x. 2 as a constant we can still think of as a function of x, 6x squared, 2e to the x, those are all functions of x, and we'll call those q of x, again, just to have a label for it. These letters aren't significant, the p and q, but this is the general structure of a first order linear differential equation. Now these functions p of x and q of x need to be continuous, as is generally true in a calculus course, but those functions aren't necessarily linear. And I point that out because when we use this term linear differential equation, your mind might start to go down a path of looking for linear functions. Notice that 3x squared, 6x squared, 1 over x, 2e to the x, all of these are nonlinear functions of x. In other words, the term linear refers to the structure of the differential equation. It's linear in terms of y, not that those functions p and q are linear. So this equation has a linear form, meaning there's no y squared, there's no 1 over y, e to the y, or anything like that. The general structure is y prime plus something times y equals something else. And those two other pieces are just functions of x. So from y's perspective, p and q look just like constants. That's the idea. As far as y knows, p of x and q of x are just constant values, so this does look kind of linear from y's perspective. And then down at the bottom I have an example of one that's not linear, just to point out the differences. Here, the fact that it's multiplied by y, dy dx is multiplied by y, that messes with the linear structure. The fact that there's a y cubed also messes with the linear structure of this. The sine of x and the e to the x plus one, those are fine, those can be the nonlinear functions they are because they're functions of x and they would fit the form of p of x and q of x. But the fact that you have y times dy dx and the fact that you have y cubed, those break the structure of a first order linear equation. Now let me point out that numbers four and five here don't initially fit this form. But with a little bit of effort, we can make them fit that form. Specifically, in each case, if we divide the entire equation by x, we would have the general first order linear structure. So I say that to point out that not every first order linear problem looks like it to begin with, but if you can rearrange moving the right pieces to the right locations and dividing as necessary by coefficients, and you can get it to look like y prime plus some function of x times y, equals some other function of x, then that's a first order linear equation. In this class, the only two methods we have for solving first order equations are by separation and using what we're gonna talk about in this lesson here. So when you see a first order equation in this class and you need to solve it, you know it's gonna be one of those two types. And so you can try to see if it fits this linear form or you can try to see if it is separable somehow and it's gonna be one of those two if you're asked to solve it. So 
every first order linear problem fits this general structure. Let me show you that first example and we'll solve this equation y prime plus 1 over x times y equals 2. Now the method for solving this, at first I'm just going to do it and trust me for a minute that this works and after we've done this problem we'll talk about why this process works. So follow me for a second even if this seems like we're just leaping out into open space. What we're going to do to solve this is we're going to multiply everything on both sides of this equation by x. Now why by x? We'll talk about that in just a minute. This x is what's called an integrating factor. And we'll use that term again throughout these problems. So in this example we're going to multiply everything by x. In general in one of these problems we're going to figure out what an integrating factor we should use and then we'll multiply everything by that integrating factor. Now let's see why this works. What happens if we multiply everything by x? On the left side we'll have x times y prime plus 1 times y and then on the right side we'll have 2 times x. It's important when you do this don't forget to multiply the right side by x as well. That's an easy simple mistake to make. Now at this point we can notice something and I wouldn't expect you to notice this offhand but it turns out that that left side can actually be reduced because it's equal to the product of x and y the derivative of that. Notice what happens if we take the product rule on x y and we differentiate that the derivative says take the first function times the derivative of the second that's x times y prime and then take the derivative of the first function which would be 1 times the second function. So if we take the derivative of xy with respect to x that expands to be xy prime plus y so that means this can be condensed down to the derivative of x times y. Now that kind of seems like magic but the point here is that with these linear equations, if they fit that format, there is an integrating factor out there that if we choose correctly and we multiply the entire equation by that integrating factor, it turns out that the left hand side will always condense down like this. And notice what it condensed down to. It condensed down to the integrating factor times y and then the derivative of that product. So that's the general structure here. Everything revolves around this integrating factor. For every first order linear problem, the goal is going to be to find the integrating factor first, which is relatively simple. We'll talk about that in just a minute. And then once you know that integrating factor, if you multiply the entire equation by that, and the equation was written in the standard linear form, that left hand side will always end up being the product of the integrating factor and y and the derivative of that product. And then the right hand side will be whatever it ends up being. And then at that point we can integrate to finish solving the problem. So again it kind of seems like magic here at the beginning but the point is that that integrating factor was chosen very specifically to make this simplification happen. To make this left side of the equation condense down like this. So there's just a pattern that emerges and if we select the right integrating factor this will always follow this pattern. So for now we'll just follow through with this problem but in just a minute we'll talk about where that integrating factor came from and how it works every time. But for now we can wrap up the problem by integrating both sides with respect to x and that's fairly straightforward. The integral of 2x is just x squared plus c and we can do one more step to solve for y by dividing both sides by x. Notice carefully that we need to divide the constant c by x as well. That's another easy algebra mistake to make is just to drop a plus c at the end of the problem and forget to include it in the solving for y step. So there's your first 
first order linear problem. And as I say, it always revolves around this integrating factor. Once we find out what that is and multiply it through the entire equation, the left hand side will always end up being the integrating factor times y and then the derivative of that product. And then we can integrate both sides and solve for y if possible. So that's the general structure. And every one of these problems follows that pattern. And once you've done a couple of them, the rest are fairly straightforward. There's not a lot of surprises here, other than this integration step can get more complicated with more complicated problems, but ours won't be too bad, any of the examples we see.